Hi everyone, welcome back to my painting studio. Um, today I thought we'd have a go at painting people. Now, I, I struggle with people getting proportions right and everything like that. And it can be a really tedious thing to do if you just want to get, in with, get on with the painting but you've got to start trying to work out uh, um, sizes of people and the, you know, in relation to their surroundings and everything else. It can be a bit boring really. So what I do is I tend to just concentrate on doing an outline of the person and an outline of the object, or what object, person, whatever it might be, and then I fill in. But this is the, the way I, tack, I generally tackle people. In all fairness, if I was drawing a house or a building of some description or a car, I probably wouldn't do it this way. Maybe a car I would. But not so. But with people, because you don't have long to sketch them, you've got to just you've got to get it down very quickly. So basically, what I look at is the general outline of there. So that would be the continuous shape going all the way on their head, their shoulders, all the way around, down to their feet, um, back up to where you started, basically. So it's just the outline. So that's how I'll start. You'll see it in a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna record it as I draw it. And uh, then afterwards, once I've got the outline, I go straight in for a little bit of the detail. So what, whatever they're wearing, whether it be a shirt, I sketch that in uh, pretty loosely. Um, and I just create that overall shape. Now, in this, this, this example that I'm going to be using is quite interesting because there's a dog running in front of the person. So I'm going to continue the line. I'm going to start at the head, then continue the line down around the person and then... Instead of uh, drawing the person, then the dog, I'm going to, because the dog runs in front of the person, I'm going to continue the outline that we see of the dog in, in situation. In situ. So it's quite an interesting way. And I can tell you, it's a darn sight easier than trying to sketch somebody, then sketch the dog and get it all to fit in. If you do it in this loose way, you end up with a very loose drawing. But for some reason, it hangs together when you start painting it. And if it's not 100% right, it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, what you're looking for is for a rough outline of the person, then get all the clothes bits in and whatnot afterwards. And you, you'll see as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to show you how I sketch it. Okay, then. I'm going to be uh, drawing in my sketchbook today. I'll uh, make it a bit easier. Well, not easier, but uh, I don't know. It's a good, nice little sketchbook, moleskin sketchbook. I really like these. They're very good. Recommend them. They do them in different sizes and whatnot. Right, let's go on with the drawing. Okay, I'm going to, just now, as I explained earlier, I'm just going for the outline, okay, of the subject. And it's going to be a very rough outline. Starting at the head. Needs a bit of concentration, and it, but it's something the more you practice, the better you get. There's that. Right, so I'm going to start with the head. I'm going to go quite high actually. And again, I'm not worrying too much about the shape of it. I'm just looking for the outline right of the body. So I'm just doing the outline of the hair, go down to the shoulder, running down, down the arm, where the arm comes round. See, I went off a little bit then. I meant to, but we'll just go with that down her leg. Now, this is where the dog cuts across. And I'm just going to look at the, neg the negative shape. You can see the arch of the dog's back goes round, something like that. Has his tail going off, like that. His back leg comes out. And then around, down. This is poor. Um, let me go up, around, up. And now we get, it meets with the other leg about here. 
I'm just looking at the negative shape in between. And just, let's make, looking, just using that negative shape to see roughly if I'm in the right ballpark with where I should be. And it really is a ballpark where you want to be. <laughs> um, you can fine tune things a little bit um, later. Okay, so we go there. Now we're going to do the other port, it comes down. Again, looking at the negative shape under the belly of the dog. Again, we've got his paw that comes in. And it goes up. And it comes to there. And then we come across. Then we've got this other leg that comes down. Down. A little nodgly bit there. That's on the beach. It's kind of not even really making contact with the sand. It's quite interesting when you start looking. Then we go up. Up, and it connects again with the body. Then we go up to the dog's head. Make sure we get that bit. Distances, again, it's just the outline of the head. You're not doing anything. Um, there, up. Up. And again, we've got the ears. And now we're, we've come back to the lady's body, so we're going to be going back up here now. All right. And we're going to be going up. Then her arm comes down. It makes you look at overall shapes, opposed to looking at all the bits in between. Her arm and her hand will look very odd at the moment, but... Probably is where I've done it. And there we go. Okay. Now we can, to, to make this look a bit more, make this look a little bit more uh, normal, <laughs> we can come up with, there's the dogs. That connects the dog up there. Ah, then we've got this bit here, which is kind of all one piece. You've got a piece here. That goes up, and you've got the dog's belly that comes down. So you can refine that a little bit afterwards. Um, you've got the lady's hand that's coming down here, something like this. But we're not, again, we're not going to be painting, drawing the hands in um, any detail. Then it comes up, and she's got a strapless, a strap top on, comes down. And that is like that, and we've got a hair which kind of comes down into a ponytail type of hair at the back. So we'll just imagine that for a minute. Again, you know, I'm not going to be too critical on myself. What's a chest there? Now we go across here for the top of her t-shirt and then we've got her other one leg comes there that goes up like that something like that and then you've got her leg so I've got that slightly wrong and the other leg has come down there a bit and you've got her foot that's in a sandal through there but this isn't going to really matter this bit not really going to see it. Well, you've got a foot there. That foot matters because it shows her. Okay, so we've got our first piece of perhaps the, the, the dog's back is a bit high here. We'll scoop that down a bit so we can come something like that. Looks better, I think. We've got this leg that's kind of coming up here. On the dog, that's right. And again, his head's a bit higher here. You've got his ears like coming down there, and his nose looking rather beautiful. But 
yeah, not too bad. Quite pleased with that. Got the lady's ear. Um, we've got her nose because they have to put something in for her features because she is quite it's quite big. So we'll just put, drop her features in there like that. But once we've got some shadow in here, that's her arm. Uh, we went a bit wrong with her arm there because I'm doing it under pressure, you see. We'll say that's the excuse. Her arm comes down not quite as much as that. That's fine. But when we paint it, you won't notice it. See it better on the. Uh, I wouldn't actually do the outlines as, as dark as like this if I was actually doing a painting. They would be much lighter. So we'll just do the next lady that's standing next to her. And again, we're going to keep this just to sort of see where the head starts. It's sl she's slightly fraction lower, I'd say. See roughly what the space is. And then I'm going to draw a continuous line again. Basically, around there, you've got a shoulder, it slopes off a bit, her arm slopes down, it comes around. That picks up with her leg, a bit of wriggle in her clothes, a bit of a, the folds in her clothes. If you put the folds in, you know, that so you don't have to put a straight line, it kind of is a lot more forgiving for some reason. Um, then we go down, and that's her foot there, her heel slightly off the sand, and then we'll go up again, um, round there, up, back, round her trousers, and then you look at the gap uh, between the legs, and you, uh, yeah, you, you kind of sketch it in. Um, here we go, the other leg. A little bit of things going on there, wiggliness. Obviously great friends, these ladies, having a good chat. Um, you go up to the waist a bit, comes in a little bit of the waist, then you've got the arm dropping down, elbow, go up, and then you've got the hand, just draw the outline of the hand, don't try and draw your fingers at this stage. Then you go back down to the, the crease of the arm. And then you shoot back up to the shoulder, up to the head, and then out for the hair. And that's it. What I didn't do was put a, this part of her foot in, which wasn't a very good example. There we go, stood on the beach. Okay, so we've got that lady in. Um, now we can put, we can draw in the details. We've done the outline, the complete outline of roughly what it looks like. It, it's not 100% accurate, but then it wouldn't be, if they were moving, you would, no way would you get uh, get that, that that information down 100% accurate. So we we like it being a nice loose, a nice loose sketch. A nice loose sketch. We're not drawing that, but so you see, I'm making it up as I go along here. It's not. Don't try and make it up. Always have a reason for doing a pencil line, like I didn't then. Um, right, we've got her clothes coming down here, and this is her, her t-shirt, which comes up slightly around to here. Again, I'm doing it very loosely, and then we go round. It comes under her arm. The arm goes up. Something like that. There's a few little folds here, which I'm going to strickle in. Um, there, be a bit generous with the arm there. But anyway, I think we can see that's kind of roughly where we want to be. That's there. We've got some folds going down here. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So you've got that lady in. Now we're going to have the dogs that are next to her. Again, this is so the two dogs are, are to the right of her. I'm going to I'm going to draw the outline of both dogs. The, the dog that sat the dog's head behind and the dog that's in front. So I'm going to do the outline of everything. 
I'm going to start with the dog's head that's behind. I'm looking just where it, it is on her, uh, on her waist. So it's about here. And I'm just going to come down with his ears. Something like that. I, you know, it doesn't really matter at this stage. That's a his nose. Because his chin goes in and it just comes out. And then it picks up the dog in front's tail. The outline brings up the dog's tail. So we're going to go with that. And it comes down like a nice big brood goat pinches in. Oh, just broke the lead of the pencil. Sharpen that up a little bit. Like I say, this is just sharpening the pencil. This is, this is great for um, teaching observation, like I say. I mentioned that before. I'm like, oh, these pencils have been hopeless. I sharpen them, then they start breaking all the way, all the way up. Always, oh, just get a different one. That one is just useless. Okay, right, got a pencil sharpened. Okay, something like that. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do before we do that, finish that dog. We'll just uh, put their reflections in. That's quite important. You've got the dog's reflections in the sand. That lady there. Something like that. And that. Uh, there, there, there we go. Right, we're carrying on with the dog. So we've just got the dog's tail there. And now we're coming up with the back leg of the dog. So I'm not worrying anything about thinking it's a dog. All I'm doing is copying an outline. That's all I'm doing. Now that's where the log connects with sand. Looking at the negative shape in between the dog's legs, you know, between the two bat legs, what it creates. Making sure I'm getting the bends in the leg the right way. I'm going up there. Come back down. I've got the dog's tummy going down. Got the leg coming round. A bit complicated that. It's got that leg up, but we'll take it up. And then we've got the dog's head. You can't really see you can't see the dog's head because he's kind of turned away from us. So we're gonna go over and back down his back, back to his tail. Like that. Now he's got this leg behind, which I am gonna sketch in now. And you just again, you can see the negative shape in between. You can just put it down. But if you're not, the, the beauty of doing it this way, you're not sort of like thinking, oh my God, I'm, I'm drawing this dog and you've got to get it right and all that malarkey. You just draw in the shape. Now that you can see this, the dog behind, its legs just coming through. There. Go up. And he's got another one. We'll just put them in, but you can hardly see it really. And you, because he's facing directly away from us, you can't see uh, anything else. And we've got his nose there. He's got his eyes, something like that. And then you've got the lovely little breaking waves coming in here, around the feet, rippling. Again, this this is just you can use your artistic license with this a little bit. Doesn't really matter. And there's another one coming in down here. I'm not going to be painting in much of this. It's just to to, to uh, give it all purpose, if you know what I mean. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then there's a nice big wave right at the back. That's coming in something like that okay so this dog you've got here you've got those two dogs you've got that one 
Right, now we're going to start painting it. Okay. Right. So first of all, I'm going to start with the figures, okay, because they're, they're the bits we want to get in. So I'm just going to do some skin tones. So I'm just going to use a bit of uh, cadmium red. I'll put a burnt, burnt sienna on there as well. Maybe a bit of cadmium yellow. A bit of red in there. And I'm going to start off with this lady's um, so this is just the first wash and we're not going to be too fussy about it. We're going to keep it very, very, very simple. Just pop it in there. Same with this lady. Over there. We can come back and put some shadows in later. Right, and you'll see how quickly you can need some new paint in these. I'm trying to sort of scrabble about for a bit of dried remains. Right, this is the uh, Labradors or whatever they are. Beautiful dogs. I'm going to warm up a bit. There. I'm going to put some cool colours in later. I'm just going to go with a with a warmish wash first. Paint in the back legs. So it's just a continue continued wash over the dog. Nothing complicated at all. There we go, there's that dog done. A bit of lemon yellow in there, slightly to change it. He's lovely, I love this one. I love the shape of him, slightly turned away from us. Again, I'm not trying to stay within the lines or anything. If I go over the lines, it doesn't matter. Okay, you don't have to worry too much about the lines. And then the one at the back, again, I'm just going to kind of join them up. And later we'll separate them. Okay, we'll do the lady's feet. Or the paddling. There we go. And they've both got... We'll try and keep the highlights on the head, like that. Now this, just wait for that to dry a little bit now. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll put the reflections in the sand of the, they're quite, they seem to be darker, the reflections, than they do on the skin, so we'll just try and make it look watery. We'll just put the different reflections in of the part of the dog's legs. But look how loose, look. I'm not doing anything really. It's just dancing over the page, as they say. Okay, and that's dried a little bit now. And I've had a cup of tea. Right, I'm just going to paint a little bit of background in now. So I'm going to use a little bit of Viridian Green, a little bit of Cerulean Blue. A little bit of magenta, cobalt magenta. It's uh, a bit of blue. Okay, so I'm, literally, I'm just going to really put this in quite loosely at the background. I could do with a bigger brush, actually. That's a bit small. And that that big, this one I'll use for going around their heads and everything. And I'll use this one for uh, doing the bigger areas. And we'll just have a look. And this is just going to be 
very crudely done. I don't want to touch that because it's still wet. And I don't want that bit to run in. I don't mind where it's dry if it touches slightly. But not... There we go. I'm just going to get a bit... It's going to come down to that point at the moment. Just want to go around the heads. Okay. Then I'm going to put a bit more green with it because we've got a bit of a wave going on here. So let's just put that in. I just want this to look like a nice, I just want this to look like a nice lively sketch. Ideally. Just being careful though to paint. Even though we're painting loosely, we're still being careful to go around, you know, there's still, just because you're doing a loose style doesn't mean you're not going to be careful at times. You have, we'll come back and reinforce that wave. Now, we're kind of into the white surf surfy area here so we're just gonna soften that top edge and break it up with a brush just there we're not going to be doing too much right now we've got this wave that's kind of in front but it's not really blue it's more of a yellowy yellowy blue this one where, it's, where, where the sand's coming through in places so we'll kind of like go with that don't forget we're going to come in yet and put all our shadows in our dogs to make them stand out to make them come come alive a bit Lots of water lapping around the dog's legs. And at the top of here. There's no tooth on this paper. It's a very smooth paper. So it's very hard to get any broken, uh, broken edges, if you like. But that's okay. Right, now in a bit of cobalt blue. Now we're just going to put where the sand's wet here. It's a sort of a, just not that back a bit. It's a bit too bright. This is kind of the sandy area where all their feet are. And we'll pop their reflections in later a bit more. So this is just a combination of uh, warm and cool colours, cobalt, magenta, cobalt, magenta, um, raw sienna and cobalt blue. Just for, for showing the wet sand and leaving a little bit of white paper in between, basically. Again, this is where there's water. We, you know, you could spend ages here. Right, let's just wait for that bit to dry and then we'll come back again and uh, add a bit more. Now the lady next to her has got quite a sort of a just just very light colour top. So we'll just paint that, put a wash over that, and then we'll come back and put some shadow over it later. 
trousers were a little bit darker, a little bit greener, so a bit of yellow, just a little bit of yellow and a bit of blue, maybe a touch of burnt sienna, just to warm it up a bit. But I don't think they're quite as green as out in the picture, but hey, that will do. Right, the lady next to her, she's not really got, she's got white trousers on, so we'll just paint a little bit of shadow. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of cobalt magenta, a little bit of burnt sienna to make it like a grey colour. And we'll just carry that straight down. Doesn't matter if it's touching the wet t-shirt, that's fine. I'll we'll just go down. Light's coming through there for the back of her legs. There we go. There we go. And again, we'll come back in a minute and just make it a bit darker. So just for the legs, we'll just make that a bit of shadow on there. And just make sure we don't confuse. Just got a leg coming through there. And there. Right then, we'll just put the shadow on the ladies arms. So for that I'm just using a bit of um, cadmium red and a bit of cobalt blue. Make a nice warm red shadow. And it kind of runs down the side of her face. So I'm going to come down there. And it casts a shadow over the front of her. Like that. Just slightly under her chin. Warming it up a bit on her arm. Down onto her hand, something like that. And it's kind of the same for this lady here. Bit of shadow there, and a bit of shadow there, and it's the same on this arm. There we go. And we've got to do the same on her hair. So basically, we just link all those shadows up. We don't just we don't do them separately. You know, we let them run into each other. It doesn't have to be uh, all done separately. A bit more warmth than that. I don't know if that's dry yet, but we'll pop the shadow in there anyway. Now this, this video is not a bit, bit of a short week this week, or quite a heavy week at work. So uh, this video is not going to get edited basically, well it hasn't been edited. Um, because I've just not had well enough time this week. But good news is, I'm going on holiday. Well, I'm going camping. Yeah, that's holiday. I'm going camping. Um, very, very soon. Just, 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 just. There we go. Um, in my tent, I'm going cycling and camping and painting and all those good things. And hopefully I'll be making some videos about it. Hopefully it will go well. And I can share 
some of my trip with you guys. If you want to see it, that is. <laughs> Hopefully you will. And then it'll be more fun sharing it, won't it? That's a bit iffy that really. But hey. Right, we'll start putting some shadow on the dog now. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, raw sienna, a bit of magenta, a bit of cerulean blue. Maybe a bit of cobalt blue actually instead. Don't know. But I'll just mix it up. Right, we'll start with his, his tail. And we'll put a nice bit of shadow in under his tail and his back leg. Warming it up in places because he's uh, it's not all cold sort of shadows, but it's not all hot either. Right, this is down the side of him. There's a nice bit of light hitting his back, but I want to keep that. This is his paw. That's quite cool actually. So I'll just have that there. And then We've got a shadow around his face, going down his neck there, and on this leg. There we go. Hope you can see that okay. I might just soften some of these a little bit in places. I don't want them to, to be too hard shadows. Maybe that one by the ear. His ear is a lot darker actually. We'll just pop his ear in. And, uh, it's funny actually after coming back after not making videos for a long time I've really lost the uh, lost the knack a bit of talking and painting at the same time. So I hope you can bear with me and uh, Hopefully I'll get it back. Okay, we'll just put some shadow, some reflections in where he's walking. We will come back and do a little bit more to them in a second. Now we'll just concentrate on these little fellas over here. Do the back leg. Tip of the tail goes under that little bat leg. Do, 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 do. His tail began reflections of the water. Got a lovely little face that one. Just want to make that eye run out a bit. Just a suggestion. It's all you know. You've got to make sure you've got those hard and soft edges. Not so and and, and soften um, the reflections basically. Soften soften the reflections and what I talking about. And where the shadows are, don't have them all hard edges basically. Um, I'll make that lady's top a bit darker. Is that dry? I just think it's too, it's not enough impact there. It's too light. So we'll just make it a bit darker. A bit of, bit of ultramarine. Maybe a bit of uh, burnt umber. Just to darken it down a little bit. 
like that. And I'll just where the lights catch it now, around this side, Get a bit more. So, just by painting, drawing, sorry, the outlines very loosely, as you saw I did, you can, you know, create quite convincing little figures and dogs. You haven't got to sort of be trying to draw everything and get it all to fit in and individually. You can get a really nice sort of loose really nice loose sketch just by drawing the outline just do some more of that wave at the background because there's a big wave coming through I want to get it I don't know if this is a mistake it's just coming in there I just want to suggest it and it's coming in behind these two ladies as well and there I don't know don't know if that looks sensible or not and then it's a bit ripply got that kind of uh, ripply effect We've missed a bit there. But there we go. Let me just have one last little look at it. It's going to do her hair a little bit darker because it is in the picture. I think it helps us to Well, I'm not going to do an awful lot more with that really it is just a sketch it was just to show you how how basically I draw an outline and um, you know to uh, without having to worry too much about drawing every single line so it's just the outlines and then you just fill them in with some paint basically also, you could take an awful, quite a bit longer over it than I did, if you want to. Um, but yeah, I think overall, let's see if I can zoom in a bit on it so you can see it a bit better. We'll just leave it there. I hope you can see that. But it's a nice, it is loose, but, but I quite like it. I like a loose sketch. But yeah, I hope it was useful. So really, just to recap, it's all about sort of um, painting a really loose, uh, drawing a really loose outline, filling it in, and then just uh, a bit like a colouring book, really. But by doing the outline first, that takes all the hard work away, and you're not complicating it by doing all the little bits in between. You're just drawing that outline and then you go in and draw the clothes on the person where the t-shirts cut across the body or where the v-neck is where the hair is that sort of thing and again with the dogs because you're not saying to yourself i'm trying to draw this dog shape you're just drawing an outline which simplifies it and takes all the stress away okay so i hope that's some of you uh some use to you um, i'm sorry if i've rambled a bit in this one because i've been concentrating what I'll be doing it obviously so thanks ever so much for watching and uh, yeah look forward to seeing you all again soon um, hopefully one of, I think the next video might be one outside oh I've got a great bargain today at the um, what do you call it the charity shop uh, for painting but I'm going to save that and I'll show you it next time um, I'm also going to be talking about this palette that I've got here um, this one this one here um, it's a fantastic palette 
but one of the best ones I've had for studio, not for outside, but for in the studio. It's brilliant. Okay, so thanks ever so much for watching and take care, everyone. Enjoy your painting and bye for now.